Well, a good Saturday afternoon, and welcome to Elma College Football Live on Q104.9 WQBX with live video streaming at elmascots.com. Today, live from Balky Field, it's an MIAA matchup between the Scots and the Hope Flying Dutchman. I'm Jeff Somerville. Toe for Goggin alongside as we welcome you into the Mercantile Bank Scots pregame show. And Toe, Scots coming off the bye, flying high, unbeaten on the season thus far. The big win over trying on the road to open MIAA play. Pope, the defending champs, uh, always tough one. What can we expect here? Well, if anybody's flying high today, they're going to be in Saginaw yeah. before they know about it. We feel like we're coming to you live from the National Hurricane Center. It is breezy here today at Bulky Field. Uh, Jim Cantor was up here. I'd be worried about a stop sign flying by and taking one of us out. But this is a game that Elma has had circled, I think, as soon as they recognized how good this team is this year, that more people have come up to me this week saying, this is the one we want. Yeah. Beating Hope matters when you are at Alma College. And the opportunity to it do does. that for the first time since 2015 really has Elma licking their chops. As you said, it's been an exceptionally successful Hope program. You look back over the recent years, second place, second place, second place, first, didn't play in the COVID season, and then tied for first, shared the title last year right. with Albion, lost that game head to head, 41-38 against the Britons. Um, Hope has a storied history and a lot of recent success and is a team that Elma just wants to beat. And now Elma comes in on paper looking like this could be the year that they could do it. Hope only three and three, 0 and two in MIAA play. They haven't thrown a passing touchdown in the league yet. Elma is thinking this could be the day. Question is, yeah. does that put extra pressure on an already 5-0 and Scots team that's starting to get some attention? Well, A, it puts extra pressure on them, but B, Hope is a, a deceiving 3-3. Three and three. I mean, that's a good football team. They expected to be good. They were picked to win the MIAA this season and uh, just kind of head-scratching as far as what's gone wrong so far. I expect that you're going to see a very good Hope squad out there today. It's going to take Elma's best effort to come away victorious. Head-scratching might be the perfect description in that because that head-scratching goes right ladder at Hope. Coach Peter yeah. Sturzma publicly commenting. I mean, this is the type of thing you might you might quietly say at a dinner party, but publicly commenting, we don't know what's wrong. We think we're underway coming up this 
Braxton Vanderkoy, who picked off passes consecutive games to start the season right so both these passing attacks will be under pressure but we expect to see we were talking about this before the break Ben Wellman at quarterback Chase Brown started last week but he's apparently been dealing with some injury issues he's expected he's here he's on the travel roster actually listed right. number one on the depth chart but expected probably just to call signals Wellman from Bloomington Illinois came in last week went 19 of 37 for 189 yards with an interception but he's got three of the most talented receiving threats in the MIAA in Terrell Harris, Ian Rampersad, and TJ McKenzie. McKenzie is sixth in the NCAA in receiving yards at over 500 yards already this season. So when Hope wants to air it out, they certainly have the options to do so, averaging 264 a game so far. Hope going to receive the opening kickoff, and that means Caleb Kinsvatter will get to come out and kick it into a little bit of a breeze, the breeze out of the northwest so mostly it, the forecast was for a west wind, but the wind is a little bit out of the northwest, and that means Kinsvatter will be kicking into that breeze as we get things underway here. Hope, as we said, 3-3 three and three on the season, opened the year with a couple of really nice wins against Aurora and Co. Had to come from behind in those games. Hope has faced double-digit deficits in four out of six games this season. So uh, obviously it didn't didn't rally in that Albion game, or it's probably more than, more than that even. Uh, with the two losses. The surprise one, I think, is the loss to Adrian. That's the one that Hope didn't see coming, 22-10 yeah. to 10 there. Close loss to Mount St. Joseph, 33-28, and then a bludgeoning of Northwestern, the Minnesota version of Northwestern, which, interesting, I never would have believed this. That's the first time Hope's played a game in the state of Minnesota. Really? I would have thought that, that sooner or later you would have found your way there with the way that this team travels, but apparently not. That is quite surprising. Carter Nofziger is back deep to return for the Dutchman. Kinsvatter will trot out. Cold and breeze won't bother him. Native of Indian River, Petoskey High School. Made a run home last week during the bye week to help his parents take the equipment out of the lake. He's probably still cold. That's a possibility. Possibility. Familiar blue shoe on the left foot, the new kicking shoe on the right foot. And we are just about ready to go. One o'clock start here. You're going to need a holder yeah. for this one, I'm afraid. You get, you get one try after the ball falls off the tee. If it falls off again, you got to bring somebody in to hold it. And I think his chances are slim here. Nofziger stands back at the five, respecting the leg strength of Kinsvatter, who in high school, now it would have been a kickoff from the 40, kicked one through the uprights on the fly at Petoskey. Indeed, the ball falls off the tee again. And that means the Scots will have to summon a holder. And this changes things as far as your return goes, Tove. Right, your, your, your kick coverage. Your you kick mean. coverage is, yeah. is what I'm talking Because now one of them we always talk about being filled is not filled. It is the one over on the far side left. Yep. Brock Beaudry will hold, and he'll have to get over there as quickly as possible. Not going to matter. Right, and even with that breeze, which didn't seem to hurt very much, Kinsvatter carries it three yards deep into the end zone. Great and Hope kick. will just bring it out to the 25 and start there. Let's take a look at the Hope personnel and try to confirm. That's a bit of a mystery. What we have been told at quarterback, we expect Wellman, but we know that Brown is dressed. Brown played last year in the game against the Scots, of course. Went 19 of 27 with two interceptions, but did score a rushing touchdown. And let's take a look. See a trio come out to the left. Is it Wellman or is it here? It is Wellman, yes. He spins and fires to the right down the sideline and a leaping grab. Catch by Ian Rampers. Time video highlight catch last year against Kalamazoo. He adds another one here on a 15 yard strike to start the game from the sophomore Wellman. Now very pretty laying out. Great start, flying Dutchman here. Kareem Williams, one of three receivers in the slot to the left. Hope first down, called quarterback keeper. Wellman tries to get around right end and nothing doing there. As Eli Jackson, the first of multiple Scots, Connor Duma, the former Hope transfer, steps up and in on that stop as well. It's a loss of a yard. Great speed to the football by Jackson that time from the linebacker spot. We had heard that uh, we would see a little bit more running. Wellman carried it 10 times last week. 
Hope has struggled in general to run the football this year, averaging about 138 yards per game. Wellman on second and 11, throws right side flat, caught oh, by the tight gracious. end, and a big hit from Duma after about a four yard pickup. Caught out there by Hoogland, the tight end and H back out of Granville. Hoogland, a big guy listed at 263, and Duma just knocked him down in a hurry. Big third down situation here early in the ball game. Hope an excellent third down team, as is Elma. 43.8% on the season for the Dutchman. Elma, meanwhile, Jeff converted 10 third downs in that game at trying two weeks ago. 10 of 21. Third down and six for Hope, just shy of midfield. First possession of the game. Wellman from the shotgun. Straight drop to his 40, steps up in the pocket, sidearms it over the middle, and it's intercepted. Gage Nelson and he's off to the races already into Hope territory with a convoy in front of him inside the 30 tripped up from behind at the 23 yard line but Elma's defense in the 60th turnover in the last year and a half and Elma's got it it's gonna come back a ways though on the return we're gonna okay. get an illegal block at about the 38 yard line so it will come back a bit but I do believe the interception stands I think that's a return flag you are correct, Elmo will not mind that very much. H. Nelson had three interceptions last year. It free, is a is holding a hold. during the return. Yeah, when we turn those crowd mics up, it's actually a little bit worse even probably. Yeah. So that's gonna back the Scots up, but still they're gonna start in Hope territory 48 yard line after the Gage Nelson interception. Alma changed a bunch of personnel before that third down, moved Nelson back to safety from his line spot, and he was in the right place at the right time on the overthrow. Well, you know, Nelson has played safety yes, from time absolutely. to time in Scott's career. Here comes Carter St. John, the freshman. Himself off out front, cuts inside of that block, gets hit hard at the Hope 39, bent backwards, pops right back on his feet, Quick picks nine up right nine. There. He's gonna try to bounce it outside and drag down by the jersey after a short, down to the 36. First down yardage, gain of four. Williams averaging 114 yards per game, seven touchdowns, and a number of long touchdowns. A 67-yarder against Trine, 72-yarder against Anderson. First down, Scott St. John's looking long. He's got Lotterman out there, covered heavily. There's got to be a flag, and there is. Darion Nunley pleading that's a good, his case. No, that's a good flag. That's a good, that's a good penalty to take, because right. Lotterman was going to score a touchdown there. Oh, for sure, Lotterman. Out of Marquette, had a step. Nunley wisely just retreated and interfered to deny the catch. And I'll tell you what's impressive about that is that ball had a lot of air under it in the wind, and St. John put it right on the money. It was in stride on the money. Uh, the wind was kind enough to stop gusting while the uh, head just official made his announcement here. Possibly just briefly, but you're right. Penalty moves it down to the 21. St. John and Williams will get lined up. Nate Webb, who has a catch in every game for the last three seasons at an H back on the right. Action, throwing right inside. Another P.I. Lotterman, but another flag. Yeah, absolutely. Hit him well early, half a second or so. Lotterman beat Nunley again, and this one will only be half the distance. Just going well, single coverage on Lotterman out there. Or actually, no, on a pass interference, that will move the ball forward, I believe. Be another first down for the Scots, moving into scoring territory here. A very good start thus far for Elma. Elma trying to capitalize on Gage Nelson's interception in the 20th. Turnover forced by Elma, which in all likelihood brings them back into a tie for the NCAA lead. Lengthy conversation here. Very lengthy conversation here. Question. It is pass interference. Just because it came so early, yep. if it is before the ball is released, it would have been a hold, but it is pass interference that, of course, 
affects the spot. In this now it's going to take it down spot. to the six yard yeah. line, Tove. Oh, gets the full benefit of the 15 in that situation, even though it's more than half the distance to the goal. Ball moves over to the right hash mark. Everybody kind of. Where the penalty occurred. Shifts and slides. St. John stays in. Sometimes Elma has gone to Rife at quarterback in these yeah. tight red zone situations, threw for two scores against Trine last week. First and goal from the six. St. John behind Williams, bounces to his left, looking for space. Not much there, gets two down to the four. Variety of Dutchman tacklers led by Nick Flegler, the freshman out of DeWitt, who initially committed to the Air Force Academy. So that gives you an idea of the level and of talent. And here comes Rife. So Rife in along with the return of Eli Jackson on offense. That's where he started his yeah. career for the Scots. Rife, the sophomore out of Frankenmuth, takes over at quarterback, and he'll take it himself on the ground, slicing back to the one. Comes up just a little bit shy. Tyler Walters led the way through the hole. Third and goal from short range coming up for Elma, looking to take an early lead. Gonna go right behind Walters and Jackson, I assume. Rife is thrown enough in this situation to keep a defense honest. Jump pass, too. Jump pass for the first touchdown last week, a regular traditional throw to Webb on the second one. Otterman splits out of the huddle first. Third down and goal for the Scots as they rush to the line. Bit of a high snap, Rife and finds the end zone. Great, great start for the Scots. You know, it's a different offense that's out there <laughs> that's that scores the touchdown. Kruger will come on to hold, tap on the helmet. Yeah, for Rife Hernandez. is becoming a touchdown point. machine. Hernandez, 22 of 23 on PATs on the season. This will be the most challenging conditions he's dealt with so far this year. JB Couch, the snap a little bit short, but pulled down and held nicely by Kruger. Hernandez booms it through, 7-0 early, 11-24 to play in the first, will return. Discombobulation on the kickoff is Kinsman. So hope we'll start with poor field position at about the 18. But Jeff, at, at my office, we oftentimes see documents that begin, take notice something. That was a take notice moment from Elma to hope oh, to start golly, this yes. game. Absolutely, no doubt about that. Hope with a nice completion to start the ball game, and then the Scots force a third down and a big interception march right down the field offensively. Hope will bring in Elijah Smith as a running back. They went empty for the first possession. Smith, 244 rushing on the year. TJ McKenzie goes in motion as they start their second drive. Quick little sidearm throw. And this is McKenzie, pardon me, that was Harris in motion. McKenzie makes the catch on the left side of the field and runs into about half of the Scots. Eight yard pick. Yeah, he made a nice move at the point of attack back inside. Got himself eight yards. That's a good play. McKenzie, as we said, sixth in the NCAA in yards, 536 yards, three touchdowns. Had one in each of the first three games, hasn't scored since. Hope looking for its first passing touchdown of MIAA play. Wellman hands off Smith, has to burst it around his own man in the backfield. Hoogland got in his way, but he picks up the first down to the 29. Well, first downs for Hope on each of the first two possessions. Let's see if this one ends better than what their first one did, though. 
Bellman had a pass sail right into the arms of a waiting Gage Nelson on possession number one. First down hope from the 29, high snap, handcuffs Wellman in the helmet, gets away an option pitch, and Smith gets the corner, turns inside at the 35, runs into Flowers at the 40, brought down at the 43. Oh, that, that was a wild play from the get-go. Snap came back like a rocket and hit Wellman in the face mask. He somehow caught it and got the option pitch off quickly, and Hope turns it into a first down He got carry. absolutely drilled, too, when he did that. Hope also going up tempo from the 43. Quick throw caught out on the left side and across midfield goes Harris. Going to be Judging short an offense first down looking by pretty two. good here. Hope averaging over 400 yards a game offensively, so. No surprise. Th th their complaints are only relative yeah. to their own high standards. Things not going as well as they had hoped. Twin receivers to both sides on second and two. Wellman rolls right, throws on the run, caught in the second not level, caught. and dropped at the last second in and out of Rampersad's hands. Ended up right on his hip. Hope needs Elma Ford. Talked about this during yep. the Martin Luther game. Brand new turf at Alma College, and we saw in that second game players slipping a little more than we were used to. Hope's gonna go jumbo here. We'll get on the play, fourth down and two. Hope with a personnel change, and that's Strickland, who fielded the kickoff out of Mason. As both teams mixing it up in the quarterback game. They're not Huge able to play keep here. the tempo up as they get the play called. Basically a wishbone alignment, yes. couple of wing backs, Smith behind Strickland. Pulls down a high snap, hands to Smith. He was hitting the backfield, and I don't think He's he short. got there. He got a big surge and then went backwards. Now forwards, they're going to say forward progress, and the whistle blows, and Elma has stopped the fourth down try. Wait for the spot here, but it sure does look like he's a good yard and a half short. The headlinesman is at the 48, the marker's at the 47, unless there's a big adjustment. Hope that is not Elma football. It. What a big stop right there by the Scott defense. It's not a turnover created, but it's just as good. The second effort from Smith almost got him there. And then it was just like the, the tunnel closed off. Now, if you're Elma, you put your foot on the accelerator here offensively. Seven, nothing. Elma on top with only 18 total yards. As most of the yardage came via pass interference penalties on the first drive. Capped off by a rife touchdown run. Carter St. John drops to his 40, steps up in the pocket. Nobody open, rolls left, just waiting for something to open up. Instead takes off, slides down at the 45. Picks up about six, six and a half. And showing that patience. running ability. And not trying to do too much. Scott's send three wide to the right. Second and three and a half. Play action fake. Now looking for everything for French. Go down the sideline. Tries to adjust to it. Got a little tangled up with the feet that time he with did. Kamara. And the ball falls incomplete. Ball sailed just a little bit that time, too. Kamara leading the way in the tackle department for the Dutchman this year with 49. So now a big third down opportunity for field here. Get that offense back out there. Third down and four, and Elma would have a decision to make on fourth down here, I think. They'll try Williams, see if he can find his way to the marker. He's close and drags his way forward and gets it. Just snuck out of the arms. Let's see, looks like a Joe Natosi out of Detroit Catholic Center who almost had him for about a three yard pickup. And now the spot, interesting, not a very the good head, spot. The head referee says first down. He's signaling first down. They will move the chains. The white hat says go. Hope coaching staff livid because the downs marker reads fourth. The ball has not been placed yet. Well, the ball's moving <laughs> a good yard ahead of everybody was standing. That's the old, we gave him a first down. Let's make sure we put the ball where a first down was. Although based on what I saw, he clearly had Easily an option pitch down. caught by Williams out to the what right. Block good blocking. And a good job by Kamara to shed that block and bring Williams yes, down. Good block, but good tackle, better tackle. Still got five or six yards, though. Down to the 38. A little bit of a dangerous push pitch. 
It was. Close to being forward, which may be the plan there is to protect a little bit. Vern Smith in at running back. Lotterman goes in motion behind. Smith gets the carry on second down. Pushes across the 35 to the 34. And I would say forward progress has stopped by now. It's Quite a no while ago. Is, no one is moving. Vern, of course, better known as Mr. Smith over at Pine Avenue School, one of two Scott student teachers. Alex Dean, the center, is Mr. Dean. I believe a number of their students are here as it yes, is community indeed. day. And I know that Jackson Mueller, one of those students, was thrilled to have Mr. Smith show up to watch his youth football That's game awesome. after Jackson was here for the Manchester game earlier this season. Third down and one for the Scots. Quick dump off pass caught by Cole Thomas, and he's got the first down to the 30. Good job right there by the Scots. Just take what's given to him, get the first down yardage. Fresh set of downs here inside the 30. Logan in there running back. Yes. Thomas. Leaving threats on the right side of the formation. Play action thrown inside. Play it off the fingertips and intercepted. Trouble. Going the other direction and off to the races at the 50. Inside the 30. Cutting inside there. Thomas is going to make 20 yard line to the interception by Flegler off the finger. Hear him. Nick Flegler to fumble earlier this year, a state champion. This time it is Hope with their 18th turnover forced on the year. A rare interception, just the fourth of the year thrown by Carter St. John. And now Elma's defense will have to rise to the occasion. On St. John either. Coach Couch talked about this during the week that Elma's defense, many times after this type of a situation, a defense comes out dejected and like, oh no, here sure. it goes. Elma th thrives in these situations. They want the chance to respond. Wellman, the sophomore, in a 7 0 Elma lead, drops to throw for Hope. Swing pass out in the flat, caught by Romano inside the 10. He falls as he makes that catch. Now they're going to be disappointed that Romano went to the ground to get that one because he could have walked into the end zone. Romano is one of the stories that is. Uh, just a bit perplexing for Hope. Under 100 rushing yards this year after 825 and oh, nine geez. touchdowns last season. Senior out of Royal Oak Shrine, second team all conference last year. Wednesday, he was a yard short, just inside the 10. Romano gets the carry, has the first down, working the six. And the pile converges there, but that will be first and goal for Hope. Play in the first, Elma up. Hope is not passing touchdown in MIAA play. They go to Strickland at quarterback. He hands off to the big man, Romano, working off right tackle, tries to get around the end. The Scots get the ankles. Sofferdini on that stop, pulling down at about the four. to go on a windy afternoon. Six minutes to go in the first quarter. Yeah. On a windy afternoon. Might be a few cold fans who'd be happy if they were under six minutes to go, but there's too much exciting football to play. Second and goal, Strickland hands for no keeps the pulls on the option, hit at the two, and brought down inside the two, close to the one. Good option fake there from the quarterback, Strickland. Yeah, he does that well, doesn't he? Presumably. Barring a loss here on third down, the Scots are going to get two more stops if they hope to keep, if they want to keep hope out of the end zone. Strickland stands at the six, just going to plow for it himself, but there's no room this time. And Strickland goes oh. backwards. The ball is loose. There's going to be ruled down by forward progress. Otherwise, Gage Nelson would have had his second turnover of the first quarter. He would have had a touchdown as well. I think that was the right call, though. He driven backwards. Yeah, I agree. We'll see where the spot is here, though, as this may have brought a it's field goal two. attempt into play. Spotted at the two. Offense stays out there. Elma trying to slam the door. Hope trying to tie this up. Double wing back with Romano at tailback. Chance Strickland at QB from the two. Looking to throw for it. Strickland dancing around. Pressure comes now. Scrambles. Hit at the two-yard line, and I don't think he's going to get there. Down at the one. The Scots hold again. 
Going to be a difficult position for the Scots here. They'll have it first and 10 inside the one yard line, but a huge defensive stand once again on fourth down. I think Strickland made the right call. He there did. was nobody he made to the throw right to, and he almost got there. Big, strong young man at 6'2, 226 out of Mason. Strickland had only attempted one pass on the season coming into today. Now Elma going to take the full complement yeah. of time available on the change of possession to set their offense up and figure out a game plan to get out of the shadow of the goal line. Play clock is under 20 as the Scots march out onto the field. Now this might be a time that you use a timeout in the first half rather it's than rush. Rife at quarterback. Well, he's the guy inside the five yard line at either end of the field, but you're right, Elma's going to have to burn a timeout. Yeah. Rushing to well, the line. No, with they only don't. Two seconds. Because oh. there's no. And actually, they get the snap they off. Rife runs into his own man and barely out. gets out of the end zone. But yeah, the penalty would have been absolutely nothing. So. Yeah, Elma got penalized for a false start in the yeah. same situation against Trine. And no reason to take a timeout there. Yeah, in reality, it might have been wiser to take the penalty rather than rush that snap, but Rife does get back to the original line of scrimmage, nothing more. Good penetration on the play by Otis Ackerman, a 243-pound defensive lineman. Elma brings the more traditional offense in now on second down and nine. Hand off to Williams. He'll get out to the four. Little breathing room, at least, for a third down passing attempt. And then a potential punt out of there. So I was going to say, do you, if you're Elma, do you throw here or do you run Williams hoping he might get seven and at least give Kinsvetter some space? I don't know. It's a tough choice, frankly. St. John stands in his end zone, third down and seven. They'll try to throw for it with a little time over the top for Garalski. Couldn't pull it in, double covered. I don't know how St. John even got that to his hands. Nate's unhappy that he couldn't snare it. Yeah, that was right in his hands. So a good stop for Hope. And they should get excellent field position here. Should start at Scott's territory. Elmo will send up Kinsvetter, averaging 38 yards per punt. Vanderkoy back deep to return. He stands at Elma's 47-yard line, and we'll see if Hope comes after Kinsvetter. Neither of these teams has had a punt blocked this season. Better a quick delivery, but very, very short off the side of his foot. It's going to land at the 30 oh, and bounce no. dead backwards. Goes out of bounds at about the 24 yard line before the Scots can get over to down it. So Hope right back in business, still down seven, nothing, but nearly starting in the Elma red zone. Yeah, this is a big ask for the Scots defense possessions in a row. This one's going to start at the 26, I believe. Vatter recognizing that priority number one was to get it out of there, but off the side of his foot and then just hung in this breeze. So like we said, a big, big situation here now for this Scots defense again. Hope returns offensively. Their second start deep in Elma territory. Wellman back in there at quarterback. Harris goes in motion. Elman drops under pressure, screen pass thrown behind the line of scrimmage to McKenzie, and Elma is there. This play will go for a loss of about a yard. It's sort of a, a screen with nobody out in front of it, just a check down. Now it's a good job by Flowers to shed a blocker. He made initial contact. Second down and 10. Wellman rolling to his right. Throws on the run underneath, reaching back for it and making the catch at the 20 is Harris. Puts him over 30 grabs on the year. Good catch by Harris. Brings up third and four. Elijah Smith stands to the right of Ben Wellman on third and four for Hope at the Elma 20. Screen pass, Rampersad tipped to himself. That delays the action and it allows Connor Duma to take his legs out. That'll break it, make it fourth and four, and I think that will, yes, it will. summon Dylan Hilger. Tough field goal here for Hilger. He's Hilger. got some help from the wind, which the leg is not an issue for him, but it's also a crosswind out of the northwest. We talked about this, about half an up to the right width worth of wind based on what we saw in the warm-ups. Hilger, five of eight on the season, but it's hit from as far as 50. 
This one will be from 38. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up. The officials leaning to take a look at it, and they say yes. Seven to three. Hope gets on the board. 157 to play in the first quarter. We will return. Scotty Cole and Ryan Ettinger's defense getting the job done here. So far, Hope 0 of 4 on third downs in this first quarter, and twice starting deep in Elma territory, and only a total of three points to show for it. Hogan along with Aiden Gurdon back deep to return the Hilger kickoff. If they get the opportunity. Puts a full boot into this one. Wind holds it up. Gurdon will try from the four. Works back towards the middle of the field. Oh, my. And quickly runs out of space at the 14-yard line. So it'll be a tough starting spot. Sam Cochran of Zealand East. Scots are not finding the goal very easy thus far. Now started with excellent field position on their first drive, courtesy of the interception. But then the start on the one yard line wasn't a whole cup of tea. And the earlier interception off the fingertips of Goralski that set Hope up with great field position only to run into a goal line stand. St. John has Hogan in the backfield from the 13 yard line. Hogan slides to the right side of the alignment. St. John gives it to him. Hogan works to his left. Supermans his way across the 15. He'll reach almost the 17 yard line as he extends the football. About a three and a half yard pickup there on first down. We'll close down on the final minute and a half here of the first quarter. Sun shining through on a breezy Saturday afternoon here in Elma. Second down and six. Shovel pass out to the left. Big and Hogan block hit well there. behind the line of scrimmage, and he's going to go backwards and then gets pile driven. That's a long time after the whistle. That was a long time after the whistle. Loss of six back to the 11. And as you said, I think one of the Scott receivers whiffed. That left Hogan alone on his island with no bottle to throw in with a message for help. Third and long here now, way back at the 11-yard line. Elma needs 12. First down marker at the 23. St. John to throw. Nobody really open. Dancing Gotta get rid of it. Looking and now just tosses it into the sidelines. And that'll make it fourth and 12 and bring Svatter back out for another uncomfortable putting situation. Hope did not bring significant pressure on the previous no. attempt. Batter will be in his end zone again. Line of scrimmage is the 11. Julian Malasco, your long snapper in these situations. Good snap, plenty of time. Much better kick this time. Vanderkoy, fair catch signaled at the 48. Wants a flag. Not going to get it. Spears was close, but just kind of ran by. It's one of the ones that if you, if you drop the ball, you actually may be a little more likely to get the flag, but when you make yeah. the fair catch... Everybody just kind of says, okay. So great starting field position for Hope. Third time in a row, they will start in Elma territory, but so far, just a Dylan Hilger field goal to show for it. Yeah, this game, that doesn't feel like a game Elma leads. Not anymore. They, they controlled that early going, but as soon as Hope got the interception yep. from Flagler off the fingertips of Goralski, yeah, the they field have, position has flipped, and Elma hasn't been able to get it back. Little end around sweep 
to Harris, finds a cutback lane down to the Elma 40 and a first down hit from behind by Nelson at the 36. And you're right, you know, th that field position flipped on the interception it return. Did. On the other hand, for a long time, that interception return looked like it was going to end in oh, a touchdown. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Elma getting back and making the tackle on that play as we need a new football. I imagine that Justin Peck will have a plan for that. Wonder what happened to the old one. Clear. Final 25 seconds of the first quarter. First down, Hope at the Elma 36. Trailing 7-3, to three. Elma scored first on a rife touchdown run. That one started today at quarterback. In for Chase Brown, hands off Elijah Smith. First down run for two. Down to the 34, that should queue up a commercial, take a quick break. Come back here to Elma College after this. The Scots lead after one, seven to three. but Elma with a 7-3 advantage on the scoreboard. Second down and eight for Hope from the Elma 34 as we get ready to start the second quarter. Hope now moving left to right from our perspective. That's going to the north. Terrell Harris goes in motion. Play action and a keep Wellman who runs up the middle right into a variety of Scots. Robertson the first of many to make that tackle. Dunwoody in there too. Makes third down and five. Selfishly, Jeff, I'd love to see the Scots get a stop right about here just to see the range from Hilger, yeah. who we saw attempt field goals from 55 in warm-ups. He hit from 50 earlier this year, third down and six. Wellman in the pocket, throws to the left flat, and Smith driven backwards after a catch at the 30. Duma again, who's had a big first half. That'll make fourth and four from the 30, and Hope You're will send out the field goal unit. This should be about a 47-yard attempt. Hilger, 13 of 17 in his career. Attempts. Wellman is also the holder. Into a little bit of a breeze, mostly across him. We'll see if the Scots rush. They may not on an attempt this long. Hilger gets good foot into it, but the wind shoves it to the right. You can just see it out there, even on the side you angle from the quarter easily, from yeah. the camera. And the Scots deny the. Mm -hmm. It's from yeah. 30. My guess is that's a full upright I think you're right from that, from that distance. Hope the wind would blow it back in. Had good leg on it. Elma resummons the offense. Remember, only 41 yards in the first quarter, although about another, let's see, 11 and 15, so 26 yards of penalties via the pass interference on that first drive, leading to the touchdown. Carter St. John tries Eddie Williams. Has to dance in the backfield and then finds his way forward to the 37. Williams is just consistently successful with these runs. Even where it doesn't look like there's a whole lot there, this one's a gain of about eight. 114 yards per game for the freshman out of Fraser. Second down and two whistles Oops. before the snap. I don't see a flag yet. Do we have? 
wall not spotted properly? I'm not sure what. This is just going to be no play. I think maybe the, the headlinesman believed the ball was spotted in the wrong spot because they moved it back. They did move it back a full yard, yep. Yeah. It moved back one yard, so must not have been spotted correctly. Second and three, Elma tries the same thing. William sidestep to his right that doesn't generate much and then just decides to take what he can get, which is the 39. That'll make it third and only one. I'd run that same play. His eight yard per carry average, Jeff, was third in the country coming into today. Hasn't had quite that success so far today. Um, um, throw. Don't oh, know dear. the play. They throw it to Frenchko, who's got his head on his hands on his head because he never turned back. He was trying to block Vanderkoy. The ball sails right by. You've got to be aware of what the play is. Scotts might go for it here. Communication. Oh, that's a disaster right there. Frenchko could have easily had the catch on just a little hook route. Elma, who came in at 47% on the season on third down, fails to convert third and less than a yard. Bit of a high snap pulled down by Kinsvatter. Spirals this one with the wind. Another fair catch signal and Ooh. almost an over the shoulder grab by Vanderkoy at his 20. So Elma has succeeded in flipping the field position. They're going to give Vanderkoy that catch at the 20. He was moving. Elma sent Rolski back deep to return. He's just inside his own 35. Sigger takes two steps to his right, sends an end over end pump, lands at the oh, 30, bounces up in the air, and Spears indeed recognizes, <laughs> I do not want to be <laughs> no. in this neighborhood anymore. He found himself in a bit of an uncomfortable position after that bounce as it just kind of bounced straight up in the air. Kind of hanging out for back for the exact same <laughs> play, and this play. time it was. a third down and one situation. Had he known what the play was, indeed, three wides to the right now, and second two as Alma clicks the tempo back high again. Straight drop from St. throws high. Territory at 43. Scots are into another gear right now. Leading seven to three. Elma snap the ball being spotted. St. John drops to midfield. Nobody open. Flushed out to the right. Dances now lobs it down the sideline, and that's a throwaway in the yep. general direction of Lotterman. Good job by St. John. Live to play another down. You can understand how this Hope secondary has 13 oh, interceptions yeah. on the season. I've not, through five weeks, seen St. John nearly as many times dancing around with nobody open. Oh, you're absolutely right. Carter's done a good job. Downs marker says third. It's definitely second. And off to Williams, and he'll get only a yard. Now it is third down, and we'll see Downs if the marker moves to fourth, yeah. and he's been off all day. See if the officials he gets can get it. this figured out. They do. Chains are also tangled up over there. They haven't had those set since the first, the last first down. Third down and ten. No gain for Williams on the second down play. St. John looks left, a little screen in it. Handcuffs Williams. He has to leap to it, but now he makes a nice move to the sideline. Will he get the first down? He's still on his feet at the 30. He's got the first down and more. What a move by Williams. 
stuck in the open field, no place to go after having to leap to make the catch, and he through debris out of DeWitt. And Elma gets the first down, kept by St. John. A little push pass forward. Webb's got the catch down to the 21, and that's important because even though the ball <laughs> only traveled about three and a half feet in the air, Another catch, another game with a catch for Nate Webb every game for the last three seasons. Hope needs a timeout. And they're going to take it. Yeah. Elma, after the four-yard pickup, Hope not able to get ready. We'll stay put with 10.32 to go. This is the first. We'll talk this over. They'll be at the 22-yard line, looking at second and six, leading seven to three here. Alma technically in second place in the MIAA standings, yep. tied with Olivet because of the bye. Alvin has played two games. They are off today. Scots need to put this in the end zone here. They need to finish the drive. Football blowing away. Yeah. You don't see that one every day. Not really. That sucker just started rolling. Here it goes again. He's going to have to put a foot on it. It will nope. not stay. That's how strong that wind is out there today, folks. Legitimate breeze. Nice crowd here for Community Day. A little sparse in the student section, of course, as the Elma students are on their fall break right now. Classes resuming on Monday. Just a half week break. Second and five situation for Elma. Lotterman, who drew two pass interference penalties on the first drive, splits wide to the right. French go Goralski come left from the gun. St. John play fake, straight drop, lobs a little fade route down the right sideline and a leaping grab held on to by Webb inside the five. It's first and goal at the five, and Webb is shaken up. Otherwise, Elma was going to go quickly, but. There are a, he's going to have the wind knocked out of him, I'm sure, because a lot of people landed on him, and I think he probably landed on the football as well. Kind of looked that way. You see Nate Webb roll over onto his back. Absolutely incredible throw right there from Carter St. John, though. Especially if that throw is sort of into and across the wind yep. to put that extra air under it. Webb, a big target at 6'3", 240. It's 18 straight games with a reception now. First and goal at the five yard line for the Scots. Webb is up. He's going to be all right after a couple minutes here, I think. And you see Reif find his way into the huddle. We'll see if Elma switches the offense. They're, they're not quite in the Reif zone. They're about, yeah, a yard five is about where normal. Normal. Right, around, right in the transition area. Except he sometimes he usually throws from about the five. We'll see. It's going to be St. John. They're going to put a fullback in with them. Yep. Actually, an extra tight end. Over And I think that
Kinsvatter to kick off, goes with a line drive this time, a little one hopper fielded at the 20 yard line. Over across the 30 and spinning to the 35. Hope gets it in the hands of Jakari Kirkland. Grand Rapids Northview product. Hope will start at the 35, but now facing a double digit deficit yet again this year. Right. Well, still plenty of time here. Nonetheless, that was a big possession for Elma to get the offense restarted, find the spark that they had on that first drive, and it came from kicking the tempo back up. It did. Shotgun with a back behind, sort of a deep pistol. Elijah Smith with a carry starting from well back inside the 30. It's back for a gain of one is all. Yeah, he Line of scrimmage there. Robertson and Sanderson in on the tackle for Elma. We've not seen Kenya Houston in the rushing attack. Yeah, he's got to be out. Surprising. He's pretty good back. 244 yards. Did not hear anything about him before the game, but perplexing that he wouldn't be out there yet. I see his number over on the sideline. Oh, yeah. Second down and nine. Wellman handoff to Smith. Took a long time was, for Smith to get to the ball. That's, that was the exact yards. point I was going to make there. Is that was I was going to say that took a long time developing for just kind of a straight option handoff. Big third down here for the Scots if they could get off the field. Already leading 14 to three, looking for their first win against Hope since 2015 when Dylan Zaborowski threw for 441 yards and two touchdowns. And whistles Time out from the Scots. Fourteen three Alma here midway through the second quarter. Alma Scott's football live on Q104.9 WQBX, streaming at WQBX.biz and video streaming online via almascots.com and YouTube. Third down and seven for Hope. Trying to keep their offense on the field here. Ben Wellman, the sophomore, drops to throw under pressure, hit hard, throws into traffic. A big collision with Harris, but after the ball was there, so no interference. And Alma gets the stop. Have gotten a couple of reports that the video stream is cutting in and out, um, mainly because the cord comes all the way from down below and it's blowing all over the it place. Could, could so. be just blowing the picture right off your screen in the wind. <laughs> it very well could be, but uh, it'll it'll do the best that it can. Sure. Certainly. But if you're struggling on the video stream, but happen to be able to hear this, WQBX.biz will get you our audio Absolutely. with minimal difficulty. We believe. Fourth down and seven, Knopfsiger to punt. Ooh, a lot of pressure oh. and almost a flag, but no, and a huge kick all the way to the 11-yard oh. line and rolling. Can Hope get there? They can't. Knopfsiger uh, kicked it too far. Boy, what a punt and that a was. Back. My gracious. 62 yards from Knopfsiger. Unfortunately, it was on the price is right. He should have bid 61 to get it out of the house. Man alive, that thing flew forever when it got up in that wind. Elma got a lot of pressure in there from, I believe, Jared Deichelbohr. I think you're right. Who did well to avoid the contact. Elma from the 20 on the touchback. Remember, punt touchbacks in college still come to the 20, only kickoff touchbacks to the 25. Buddy Hogan at running back. Play fake, St. John rolls right, has Thomas underneath, goes deeper, and he's going to get it picked off. Great in. Her great interception in anticipation along the sideline and all the way to the end zone for a Hope touchdown as it's Darion Nunley. Way too much air under that pass. That's one of the first errors I've seen from St. John this year. A rare miss 
from Carter St. John and the second big hope return. And this time Elma can't stop it. Flegler wasn't able to take his to the house. And Elma ended up escaping that possession Nunley all the way. And 14 to three turns into 14 to nine with Hilger out for the PAT. Of course, doesn't quite a lot have of the problems here. Well, you're not expecting on the no. first Elma offensive play that you're going to need your PAT team. Wellman gets it down. Hilger puts it through. 14 to 10, 838. A sudden change here at Balky Field. We'll be back. The Scots will send the offense right back out in a moment. comes out. little slower 14 to 10 Elm still on top no. that's Terriot it's true Elma out to the 48, and now they go up tempo. Williams to the right, cuts back inside the guard tackle gap, crosses midfield to the Hope 49. That's a gain of three. Really effective play action, though, on the French go completion. Left the middle of the field open, second and seven. Little end around. Trickeration coming back to Goralski, working towards the Scott sky sideline, tries to turn it up and runs out of room. Kamara with a nice block, and Cole Thomas grabbing his arm, yep. trying to throw a block in there against Luke Palmer. Yeah, he got a big initial block from Carter St. John on the alignment. Thomas comes out, and we'll head straight to see the training staff. The arm's already wrapped all up. Webb will split out wide on third down and seven from the Hope 48. No gain on that previous play. Blitz, St. John blitz. in trouble, and he's going to eat that one back at the, his own 44. Yeah, they brought the house there. Palmer, his second sack on the season, and a variety of compatriots with him. St. John had a little trouble handling the snap, and yep. my guess is that he took the see all the white oh, jerseys yeah. headed his direction. Finds a new gear as the wind 
finds a new gear. Holy moly. It does that from time to time. Kinsvatter on the punt. No pressure, good kick. Vanderkoy will just let this one go. Lands at the 10, takes a dead bounce, and that'll allow the Scots to down it. At about the 17, Holloway gets there for the touch up. So Hope still lacking an offensive touchdown and no passing touchdowns in MIAA play, but they now trail only 14 to 10, courtesy of the Nundley interception return. Well, Scott's defense up to the task so far, but they will be lean upon again here. Scott's fifth scoring offense and scoring defense coming in today allowed under 10 points per game will be disappointed to get tagged for seven really fault. Hope from the 17. Hoogland in motion. It'll set a trio of receivers to the left. Little sidearm completion to McKenzie. Hops through a tackle flag down behind the play. And I wonder if yeah, there's an holding, alignment issue. Holding, holding on the okay. offense, yep. Oftentimes you'll see that on the bubble screens that the receivers it's be a find wide receiver themselves. Hold. Yeah find themselves right in front of a linesman. Oh, yes. literally right in front yeah. of him, yeah. That's a wide receiver that, hole. Hoogland, in fact, the tight end, but he had come in motion along with the receivers and was one of the blockers up in front of that bubble. Looking down on the Scott sideline, they are re-wrapping a brace on Cole on his left shoulder. Sorry, no, 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 no. Cole, Cole Thomas. Thomas. St. John's fine. Before, before I set a panic off, no. Thomas, who got injured on that previous possession. St. No, John Carter's indeed. over talking to, uh, I can't see who's talking to because he's covering him up. Right. But number I of the assume Scots it's offense. Mr. Reekma. Yeah, I think that is offensive coordinator Zach Reekma down there with Carter St. John. Apologize. Uh, now I can see him, it is. First 19 for Hope after the holding penalty. Wellman drops almost to his own goal line, slides it through traffic. Incomplete, and incomplete. eventually trying to get it to Nofziger out at the 20, but that was a dangerous throw. There were a lot of Scott's hands around that one. There were Scott's hands, there were Hope hands, and there was some turf, and turf won the day that time. And so 6.03 to go, plenty of time in the half, backed way up inside their own 10 yard line. You th maybe would have thought about a run there on first down just to run a little bit more of that clock down, but Elma can strike so quickly that it might not have made any difference. It's more a field position question. Yeah. Play action instead. Wellman rolls to his left, throws into the second. He got first down and runs out of bounds at the 32. Nice play there. Good read by Wellman. A yeah, huge play. Harris closing in on 500 receiving yards on the season. Opened the year with 182 yards, two scores against Aurora. Hope from its own 31. Wellman wants to run with it. And had to wait in the backfield, and now a flag comes. And let's see, are the Scots waiting for the flag, or are they pleading their case? Well, Dunwoody is... Dunwoody was having to put his jersey back on, so... Yeah, that would be a pretty good indication there might have been a hold, which is approximately where the flag is. Yeah. It is a hope hold. Deep hold, too. Dunwoody yeah. had to put both shoulder pads So Elma would have been happy having already stopped Wellman for basically no pickup, but this is going to be about a 13-yard penalty. And now first and forever for the second time on this drive. Yeah. Hope just converted the last one. Yeah, they had no problem on the first one. Penalty back, six catches. Duma tackle attempt and heads to the side. That that's the second time Harris has voluntarily gone out of bounds. Yep. Scott's are gonna 
find somebody that can cover Harris, though. They're struggling with him right now. Ian McKenzie, both over 30 receptions on the season. First down into Elma territory at the 45. Still 437 to play in the half. Wellman drops, good protection, thrown underneath and off the fingertips, and that was hearing the footsteps of an approaching Gage Nelson. Yep. And it caused the T-Rex arms for TJ McKenzie. Lucky that uh, there were no Scots in the area behind that one. Yeah, that's the issue when it goes. It's very similar to the pass that Geralki could yep. not catch yep. that then got picked off by Flegler in the first quarter. Hope taking a long time to signal this one in. Second and 10 from the 45 as the Kilty Marching Band warms up behind us. Incompletion stopped the clock with 4.31 to play in the half. Scott's up 14-10, Hope on the move. Handoff, Elijah Smith runs into one Scott and then Jerome Robertson will end his running attempt at the 41 after a pickup of three, third down. Big play right here in the balance of this one. Hope is already converted two first down and 19 or mores to pick up first downs. This is third down and six. Wellman, again, well protected in the pocket, takes off on the run, hit by Duma, and I believe about a yard short of the first down. Scott's just couldn't get any pressure. Duma like a missile, and he is a yard short. Wellman has been well protected today. Now the Scots have 15 sacks on the season, averaging three per game, but have not had a lot of pass rush success today. And Scott's remember that- Scott's gonna take time out. They weren't lined up defensively. Remember that Hope has four of its five offensive line starters back they this do. season, only, only eating graduated. That was a and that yeah. right shot. He got Inverted bone here. They might have done that anyway just because of well, the Well, they were ready situation. to run the play. Yeah, but I think they certainly would have. Fourth down in a yard. Elma's been great in these situations so far. Option play. Strickland has it and a couple more. Down to the 32. Fake the handoff. Kept it himself. And the big man at quarterback easily picks it up. So now Strickland having to go in a regular situation as well. Right. Though, so that'll be interesting. Ran the fourth and goal play, tried to throw for it, wasn't anything there, took off on the run, and the Scots stuffed him at the one yard line. Now he's got to run a sort of extended two minute offense with three and a half to go, calls his own number, runs up the middle, upended at the 25 by Kretschmar, but it's a healthy pickup on first down, bring up second and two as the sun comes out. Hope rushing, trying to get set up. Chase Frenetti comes in as a receiving threat on the right side. Two two-man trains, and Strickland again. Scots need to realize that Strickland is not giving it up. I don't think he's going to throw. Hope is rushing to warm up some other quarterbacks over on the sideline here. Strickland took up the middle for it to the 20 and picked up another first down. Chains again tangled up a little bit trying to get them set. Option play to the right. Strickland keeps it himself. Steps inside of a tackle. Very important as it keeps the Dutchman from taking the lead. Force them to earn it from the seven yard line. First and goal now. Strickland keeps the tempo up. Smith the tailback. Gonna move over where Strickland wants him, which is side by side. 
Strickland again goes left, uses block. Hilger boots it away for Hope. And Elma's going to bring this one out from about five yards deep. And Gurdon upended at the 20, so loses about four yards Flags on the exchange. flew like crazy over yep. there, too. We'll wait on this one, see if the Scott's got whistled. Where is the flag? Way it's over way on the over sideline? Way over on the home bench. Soferdini got called for a personal foul, I think. The Scots are unraveling a bit here right now. Yeah, Elma, Elma needs to and get we, to halftime. We talked about this in the pregame, that this situation would happen at some point. Yeah. How would they respond when adversity arrived? Wait on the penalty call here. Diagnosed that one correctly, and that means Elma's got to start from the 10. And remember, Hope still has two timeouts left, so Elma has to be a little bit careful about an early incompletion. Yeah, they've got to find a first down somewhere here. So Carter St. John, a couple of interceptions today. The second one returned for a touchdown. Rolls back out with Eddie Williams at running back. Twin receivers to the left, first down handoff Williams. Hit right at the line of scrimmage, but keeps his feet and proceeds out across the 15 to 16 yard line, maybe even the 17, and a timeout immediately taken by Hope. Bold call. Interesting Bold that Hope, call. Hope would do that after a healthy pickup on first down. Yeah, second, only two. Within 10 seconds anyway. Well, that, that's, that would have been an interesting question see yeah. whether Elma's going to go up tempo or if they're going to try to drain clock. I think uh, I think the Scots probably want to try and score here, at least get a field goal to tie this thing up going into the break. Yeah, I think the idea of keeping it on the ground with Williams, who we know has broken a number of big play touchdowns already this year. Well, and he's having a big day today. 11 carries 43 yards and a touchdown. Just hasn't had the gaudy play yet. Right. Yeah, hell. Still waiting for his 60 plus yarder that we've seen so many times. Yeah, he breaks one of those, he's up over 100 yards. French go will go wide right as Elma comes out of the timeout huddle. Good to see Cole Thomas back out there after basically getting his arm strapped back on. Second and a long two for the Scots. French go in motion behind everyone. They fake to him, and then St. John runs it himself into the second level, grabbed by the ankles at about the 22, but that moves the chains, which will briefly stop the clock. If I'm Elma, I'd go quick now. To someone's advantage. Quickly get the ball spotted. Clock runs 1.30 to play, 17-14 Hope. Late here in the first half, Williams for a couple of yards, and Hope Hope's takes another take timeout. Time so this there. is shocking to me. That one, that one is a little surprising. Reserving time. And I guess maybe, maybe your thought process, if your hope there, is that by using that timeout, you force Elma to stay on you the do. ground. You do. I get that. But I mean, Elma could throw if they wanted to. Well, they certainly could, but they then risk risk giving the ball back, which they don't have to do. Elma does get the second half kickoff, so if they feel like the more prudent strategy is to go in and regroup while only down by three. I mean, Elma's got tons of faith in their defense, you know. True. But simply a situation where Elma doesn't need to take unnecessary no. risks here. Sure. I don't think you just kneel it down no, either, no, but... No. 
But one question is, does Hope actually have an additional timeout left? The scoreboard, scoreboard says it, they it, do. Yeah, the score. Well, but the scoreboard said two, and they've taken two since then. So something was incorrect either before or now. Uh, the ball never came. Yeah. No snap, and Elma the old offsides himself. on everyone but the center. Yeah. Let's see if he says it. No, nope, they're not even going to announce it out loud. Well, maybe they will. Just too loud to hear. He's but cutting out a little too much with the uh, wind. Elma back into second and 12. And now they will have to make a little bit of a yes. decision whether they want to be aggressive or just put it in the hands of Eddie Williams. Selection is Williams. He's going to cut back to his left, hit at the 20, and puts a hand down but cannot get out of there and that tells you hope did not have an additional Correct. timeout yeah. so clock runs elmo will have to snap third down with approximately 30 seconds left in the half so they can just keep it on the ground and then run out the half yeah see if they realize that well unless hope is saving a timeout now so as we said the scoreboard does still read one so we shall see Six defensive backs for the Dutchman. Third down, quick throw from St. John, caught by Williams, gonna try to get outside on Face the mask. pass and driven out, I don't see a flag. His head did turn, but but of interest, Williams gets driven out of bounds and yeah, that that's stops huge. the clock. That is huge. So a little bit of a mental error there, unless Hope did have a timeout left. The fact right. that Elma threw there suggests to me that yeah. Hope actually saved that timeout. But now Elmo will have to execute in the punt game oh, with Hope 35 will be coming seconds after this remaining. One. one would expect that if Hope has a punt block, they will do that because Vanderkoy really hasn't gotten a chance to do anything with the Kinsvatter punt. Soffordini late to run on. Play clock at seven. Back to Kinsvatter, a little bit of pressure, but not much. The punt is short again, though, and angled oh, towards the sideline, but it gets a big forward bounce, and the clock continues to run as that goes all the way down to the 34-yard line. Hope will have 30 seconds left from their own 35. That was uh, a very fortunate bounce for the Scots. That punt did most of its work on the ground. Somehow only five seconds ran off the clock. Yeah, with the amount of rollout on that, it seems a little surprising. Clock operator not doing the Scots any favors there. So we'll see how aggressive Hope wants to be. Oh, we haven't seen the new quarterback Strickland throw yet. Only 0 of 1 on the season. Remember, though, the field goal range from Hilger yes. warmed up from 55 in this direction. Strickland keeps it off a of play fake, runs to his left, pulled down at the 40. Clock runs 23 seconds. Hope's going to hustle. Probably only time for one more play and then a spike if they really hurried. 12 seconds and counting, second down and five. Strickland wants to throw with it, dancing in the pocket. Nobody open, takes off on the run. He's short of the first down. That'll keep the clock moving and that's going to end the half. Scott's with a big stop there, but Hope rallies in this first half, takes the lead by three into the halftime break. 17 to 14, we'll pause for a couple of announcements. Come back, we're gonna try to play the Kilty Marching Band for you. There is a lot of wind blowing into our crowd mics, so we'll try to get that. There is a flag on the field, everybody is left. Yeah, the but officials are out. trying to blow the whistles to get the teams back. All right, All right. Dunwoody flagged for an unsportsmanlike there at the end of the half, and it means Hope will kick off from midfield to start the second half. But like I said, we will come back, try to play the band for you, and then have the Pizza One halftime report. Halftime score from Elma College. Hope with the lead by three, 17 to 14.
Back at Elma College, halftime 17-14. Hope leads Elma, a Kilty marching band, taking the field right now. We will attempt to play their halftime show for you. Hope with a slight edge in total yards there in the first half, uh, just a little over 200 total yards for the Dutch. Uh, 219, the exact number to 162 for Elma, but really the key difference is the interceptions. Elma with one that set up their first touchdown, but Hope with two, one of which went back for a score. The other one led to Elma having to get a big defensive stop. Elma actually stopping back-to-back -back Hope possessions that started inside the Elma 25-yard line. But Hope scores the last 14 of the half to take a three-point lead into the break. And we'll stop now for the sounds of halftime.
And welcome into the Pizza One Halftime Report as the Kilty Marching Band finishing up their performance here and striding off the field under the direction of Dave Zerby, of course. 17 to 14, Hope rallies from a 14 to three deficit, something they have done before. They were down 14 to three in their win against Coe and actually tallying it up, Jeff, counting today, Hope has been down by double digits in six of seven games That's this crazy. season. Now, obviously that includes three losses, but still not uh, flinching no. in the face of that early deficit. And now the question is, how does Elma respond? Because they haven't dealt with this kind of adversity really all year. I think the only time that they have trailed all season long may have been in the first half of the overtime against Ohio Northern. So how do they feel after letting that early 11 point lead slip away, yeah. struggling with a couple of turnovers, really the first miscues from freshman quarterback Carter St. John, who throws two interceptions, held under 100 passing yards in the first half with 98. And what does Hope do at quarterback in the second half? I think that were... might be the biggest key question in this game right now. Well, here's the thing. Chance Strickland comes in at quarterback, carries the ball 11 times for 47 yards and a touchdown. Is it possible that Hope found its rushing attack in the form of a 225 pound quarterback. Sure, I get that. I would understand that, but I think that Elma would stack things up very, very quickly if they see Strickland back in there at quarterback and, and kind of put a stop to that if they could. Strickland, two of two passing in his career. I had the wrong stat for him earlier, but just a, a couple of attempts, but has completed both coming into today. And, uh, and has not attempted to pass yet today. He dropped back to throw one time, but was not able to find anybody open and just held on to the football. So I, I think you're right. The question is, if you're Elma, you know, how much do you plan for that at halftime? You've seen Wellman on the <coughs> sidelines with his jersey off, working yeah. on that shoulder after the hard hit from Connor Duma. But you can't just go in there and conclude that it's going to be Strickland in the second half because you really just don't know yet. No, you have no idea. Uh, you have to plan for everything. Offensively, it's been close. It's just not quite been there. Hope's done a nice job, and we expected Hope would do a pretty nice job. Uh, but Elma just hasn't been able to get going, haven't been able to finish some drives. There have been some open opportunities in the passing game that have just barely been missed. Uh, it's going to be a, a battle here in the second half. There's no question about it. It's... Uh, Elma's got their hands full. They knew they were going to. This is a difficult league. Hope is the defending champion. Hope was picked to win this league this year. And, uh, you know, it, taking the game into the second half, it's going to be a fun one. Yep. A couple of, uh, like you said, just uncharacteristic miscues that we haven't seen from the Scots so far this year. The, the pass that went off the fingertips of Goralski, the play where Frenchko didn't look back for the yep. pass. Just, just the types of things that you're not used little to Elma mistakes. doing. Yep. Little mistakes. And, and they added up a little bit before all was said and done. And Elma will have to eliminate those in the second half if they want to come back and win this game. A couple other scores uh, from around the MIAA. Olivet leading Trine. And so that's an interesting question. That game's at Olivet. But maybe a sign that Trine wasn't quite all it was cracked yeah. up to be this season. Remember, Elma really trounced on the Thunder two weeks ago. Kalamazoo and Adrian play later today. That's a 5 o'clock start. Albion has the bye. Now a ranked team in Division yeah. Three are the Albion Britons. Of course, they knocked off Hope 30-10 to 10 last week. Other Scots Athletics action going on today. Men's golf is down at the MIAA Fall Final. Shot 323 yesterday for good fifth round. place so far. Eli Pinter, who oftentimes is up here doing technical work yes. for our broadcast, shot 77 yesterday. So congratulations to him. So they're they're playing today. Men's soccer takes on Kalamazoo at 3:30. Women's, women's soccer at Olivet at 7:30. And hope it warms up down there <laughs> by then. And volleyball taking on North Park and North Central today for Coach Madison Kelsey. 4.54 left on the halftime clock here as we are in the midst of the Pizza One halftime report. Take a look at a few more of those halftime stats. We mentioned Carter St. John held only to 98 passing yards in the first half on 8 of 15 passing with the two interceptions. Eddie Williams a solid 13 of 46 on the ground and a touchdown. Gavin Ripe had the other Scots touchdown, three carries for four yards for him. St. John 13 rushing yards himself. Frenchko leading the way in the receiving game with 33 yards on two grabs. Williams, two catches out of the backfield for 23. Nate Webb, two more catches to add to his career tally. 21 yards for Webby and 17 yards for Gorelski on one catch. Cole Thomas, a four yard reception and did get back into the game after having his left shoulder banged up a little bit. 
Over for Hope, Ben Wellman got the start in for Chase Brown. Goes 13 for 19, 119 yards with an interception, but then exited himself with a shoulder injury. Chance Strickland came in, had already played some in the game in certain yep, situational certainly. Uh, formations, but then came in and took over, led the Hope touchdown drive that gave them the lead. He finishes the half 11 of 14 on the ground with the touchdown. Elijah Smith, seven of 27. Terrell Harris, two for 13 on the ground, carrying the football and then four receptions, 61 yards in the passing game. Dan Romano, two catch, or sorry, two carries for seven yards and Wellman had four carries himself at quarterback while he was in there. We mentioned Harris with the four receptions. Ian Ramper said two catches for 19 yards, including the opening catch of the game. TJ McKenzie, three catches for 14, and then one catch apiece for Romano, Nofziger, Hoogland, and Smith to round things out for Hope's offensive stats. And it seemed, Jeff, that, that Elmo was most effective offensively when the tempo was the fastest. Yes, it's a, as fast yes. as it can get is when no. they were the best, certainly. And and that's a little bit scary when your team turned it over two times in the first half and maybe you're a little apprehensive with the freshman quarterback. I get it. But at the same time, you kind of feel like maybe, maybe that's where Elma's advantage is and you just got to wheel and deal and hope that it works um, because that's certainly when they move the ball the best. The two pass interference penalties drawn by Lotterman on the first possession and then the touchdown drive. Yeah, no doubt about that. And uh, just, uh, I think one of the biggest keys for Elma in the second half is coming out having a nice drive to start the second half. If they can do that, uh, there will be no issues of confidence or anything like that. It's just, uh, we're in a ball game here. Even if they don't get, you know, six points, if they can go down and even kick a field goal and tie this thing up or have a nice drive, uh, flip the field position, I don't think there's gonna be an issue of confidence. We talked about in the pregame, What's it going to be like when they're behind at some point? Here we are. Right. It's going to be fun to see how they respond. Yeah, I think if you if you talk to the Scots coaching staff, they would say that these 30 minutes of football, this is what you play the game for. Yes. This is where you find out what you're made of. A little bit of adversity, not a situation where you're down 28 to nothing and, no. and have lost hope, but how do you respond in a situation where you are called on to find something that you haven't had for the first 30 minutes of this game? Yep, no doubt about that. And uh, the wind is going to continue to play a factor in this. It's gusting higher than it's gusted all day right this second. And, you know, we'll see how it turns out. Yep. Hope out for sort of a full on-field warm-up. It took them a little bit to come back out. We're going to have to see what we can figure out as far as their quarterbacking situation goes. It's uh, Brown is still warming up over there. Chase Brown, the normal starter. Brown on the season, 99 of 168 for 1,373 yards, 10 touchdowns, seven interceptions. From what we understand, has been dealing with a back issue, and that was the reason that he was not going to go today, but he seems to be slinging the ball over there a distance of about 15, 18 oh. yards on the, in the air with no trouble as he is warming on the, the sideline. The question, though, is, is, you know, what can he do in the running game and what happens when he gets hit? Right. Now Strickland has just come back onto the field very, very late. He's coming on right now. Uh, so he didn't rejoin the team until 33 seconds left in the half. And I'm not sure about Wellman. Right, we have not, not yet located number four over on the Hope sideline. So keep an A eye out. A lot of uh, uncertainty as far as the Dutchman quarterbacking situation goes, certainly. Elma will get the ball to start the second half and we see another shake up in the Elma kick return roster. As I believe we've got Devin Rice back there out of New Mexico. Back along with Hogan. Unlikely that either of those gentlemen will get a chance to return this kick from Hilger, but you never know. Elma did bring one out of the end zone late in the first half. Oh no, that wind is whipping right now. This kick could go anywhere. Remember though that- Oh, it's Hilger, coming up to the yeah, 50 yeah. though. So, so yeah, Hilger, it's Hilger not will going be kicking anywhere. Off, off from midfield because of the personal foul. Elma suspects an onside kick. Unsportsmanlike called. And Elma indeed will put the hands team up and that begs the question of whether Hilger, who certainly has the talent to do so, might try to kick it into space here. Oops. Hilger knocks the ball off the tee himself rather than the wind. But we 
we shall find out from the 50. Hilger squares and gets ready to get this second half underway. Hope 17 to 14, the halftime lead, and indeed, Hilger will just take that one eight yards deep into the end zone, and the Scots will start from yeah, the 25. Yeah, that's smart. One of the reasons that I personally felt pretty confident that Hope didn't have any razzle-dazzle planned was the late return from Strickland from the yeah. locker room. That if you're planning that you might send your offense right out to start the second half, you're probably going to have your quarterback out there. Now let's see what the Scots come up with offensively here. Carter St. John, 8 of 15, passing 98 yards, but two interceptions, and one of them went back, courtesy of Darian Nunley, for a touchdown. That's, That's a the big difference in this ballgame right now. Indiana product won a state championship as a junior, did Carter St. John. He'll give it off to Eddie Williams to start the second half. Williams out to the 28, brought down by Kamara and a couple of other Dutchmen as well. Williams closing in on the 50-yard mark, but a young man who averages 114 a game, still a ways to go. French go wide left. Waterman confused about the alignment. That'll slow Elma down a little bit. Looking for guidance from Goralski and the sidelines. Now they'll go on second and seven. St. John play action up over the middle, looking for French go. A lot of contact. Vanderkoy looked like he kind of had, had French go wrapped up, but reaches across and knocks the ball away. Adam Vanderkoy, a talented cornerback, five interceptions on the year, moved from safety to corner this year, and knocks that one away, brings up third down for Elma. Whew, that's a rough one if you're the Scots. Huge situation early in the second half. 17-14, Hope, Elma on its first second half possession, less than, th or just over 30 seconds into the half. St. John again, little square in, caught by Lotterman. It has the first down out to Beautiful. the 37, wrapped up immediately by Nundley, but that is what the Scots needed right there, That's and now they huge. want to hustle. They are lined up. They're just Hope's waiting for trying a to sub Hope too. is not ready. The umpire took a moment to get the ball spotted. That gave Hope a chance to catch up. Williams squeezes through a tight opening out to the 40 for three yards. Now Williams kind of... Going with the three yards in the cloud of dust here so far today. He has been more of a power back today, that's true. Williams 5'10", 185, so not the biggest guy out there. On second down, St. John from the pocket. Got Lauterman wide open at the 35, and he's out racing Vander Koy. It's a Scots touchdown, no flags. 60-yard touchdown toss, and the Scots went back to what they did on drive number one, which was go deep for Lauterman. This time he hits him in stride. No pass interference could even be committed because Lauterman had tons of space. If you wondered how the freshman quarterback would respond at the half, there's your answer. A minute and 14 seconds and the Scots retake the lead at 20 to 17. Huge, huge drive by the Scots right there. to try to make the advantage four, which is important in a game it against is. a kicker of the talent of Hilger. That kick is up, the wind blowing it hard to the right, but it's drilled. 21-17, 13.46 to go in the third. We'll be back. What a response from the Elma Scots to start the second half. They strike in just over a minute. Carter St. John on a bomb to Ty Lotterman. Kinsbatter's kickoff goes out of bounds, so Hope will get to start at the 35. Not what you want right there. That was well out of bounds, too. Ty Lotterman's 12th catch of the season and first touchdown is without question the most important of his career so far. 
looked like Kinsbetter might have caught that one heavy again, and then the wind just carried it off to the right. And pardon me, 13th reception, because that's Lauterman's second of the day. It's going to be Strickland at quarterback. Right. That was what it certainly was trending towards at the and end of the, the half. The Scots all point to him. Harris and McKenzie come wide to the right. Scots need to get Flowers over a little further that direction. And Strickland runs to his right. And Gage Nelson a tap on the chest to say, hey, guess what? I've seen that now. Yeah, I, I put Gage Nelson as a spy on Strickland wherever he goes until he shows the ability to throw the football. Seems like a fairly good idea. Nelson had the Scots interception in the first half. Elma forcing only one turnover in the first half, which feels uncharacteristically low. Well. 20 turnovers forced by the Scots defense this season. 18, 19 now. Back to himself, fakes a flare pass, gets away from Nelson, finds his way out to the 40. Now a big third down play early on here for the Dutchman. I like the late Love fake it. from Strickland. Love it. First He's down marker, of course, is right at the 45, because this play, his possession rather, started at the 35. Definitely a few tricks up his sleeve. Out of Mason, Michigan. Two touchdowns on the ground coming in today. One more today. Strickland rolling right, wants to throw. Nobody open yet. Now we'll take it around and run. Hit at the 35 or 45 and picks up the first down. Spun up the sideline. Elma appeared to have him Just dead to right. Off a man. And picks up the first down to the 49. Scott's tackling is going to have to be very solid here. You can't, yeah. He's a you big can't, guy down there. You can't just blast him in the shoulder and hope he's no, going to fall down. No, not at all. It's a big first down for Hope if Elma had snared the stop yeah. right away after the early touchdown. Strickland extremely impressive in the running game. Alex Weber looking back from his offensive line position. Deep toss to Smith on first down for Hope, and he's got a big burst into the Elma secondary. Now Kretschmar, the last Hope, pulls him down at the Elma 32. Drew Hum was closing as a potential extra last hope. Now hope breaking tackles though. A big surge from Smith that we had not seen all game. He had a big one against Elma last year, 106 yards and two touchdowns. But Hope trying to answer the early Elma score here in the third quarter. Strickland deep toss, Smith again. Handles it this time, two Scots corners are there. Flowers along with Duma and Smith hauled down for a loss of a couple of yards. Just that slight loss of momentum bobbling the pitch was more than enough to bust Five that play. new Scots onto the field defensively for this play now, too. Looking to keep them fresh, looking to keep them moving. Hum, Jackson, Frederick, Soferdini all in there and what will essentially be a 3-4 alignment, almost a 3-3-5 now as Nelson will move to a defensive back with three wide receivers split wide left for Hope, second and 11. Strickland looks left, quarterback keeper straight ahead. Good block against Underhill. It gets him a couple extra yards. He's not really thinking third. a whole lot about throwing the football. No, but he does a good job of selling that he might. He does. Just enough to make Elma wait. Eventually, he's going to have to pop one. Third down and six. Scott's coach is yelling from up here to implore their defense to go. Strickland runs left, gets through a, fir a good first try and Drew home. Hull. Steps up and takes the legs out from Strickland two yards short of the first down marker. I think it's go time if you Hope got a great block against Flowers. But Hum came up in his stead, and it does appear that Hope will go for it down by four. No reason to attempt a long field goal in this win. Elma has held tough in these situations a couple of times today, including the goal line stand. Fourth and two and a half. Double wings in front of Strickland. Low snap, has to scoop it up, wants to throw under pressure, and Elma gets there under Hill with the sack back at the 39. The snap through that entire playoff, Toaf. Underhill, Dunwoody, and Nelson closing late. And just as you said, the ground ball snap. Strickland could not scoop it up and have time to survey his receivers. The Scots were there, and they stuff Hope on fourth down again. That's about as loud as I've heard Bulky Field in a while, too. Community I know Day. the wind is blowing that sound up to us, but the that was loud. Community members have to channel their old student section days with a lot of the Elma students on break.
They rally up the noise and the Scots get the offense back out there, now back in the lead. 21-14, play action. St. John looking long again, again for Lauterman. Oh, a close hook. Nunley had the waist for just a half a second. No flag. If the ball would have been thrown a little further inside, the flag would have flown, but it was outside and Lauterman was coming inside. Incomplete second down. I love the Scots going right back to the well though. Thomas at an H back on the left. Goralski and French go that direction. Hand off to Hogan. Comes across the formation. Hits a man hard and bursts through the tackle. Gets four yards after that out to the 38. Nice run there for Buddy Hogan. Still a third and six situation here now for the Scots. They picked one up on the last drive. I'll tell you what, Brady Howe, the Hope captain and preseason All-American, was on the losing end of that battle with Buddy Hogan. Third down and Blitz. six. St. John's going to change the play in the face of that blitz. Yep. Let's see if Hope backs the blitz off now. A cat and mouse game. Third and six. Hope still brings some pressure. Hand off to Hogan. Hitting the backfield. Tripped up and can't get out of there. That's Debris. Can't Big stop there. Fourth and eight. So Hope holds Elma to a quick three and out. And then they'll get another crack with their offense. Nine minutes to play in the third quarter. Elma up on Hope, 21-17. Elma led this game 14-3. Hope scored 14 unanswered in the second quarter. Beautifully. Vanderkoy watches in frustration. Oh, great punt. As the ball rolls all the way down to the 13-yard line. Beautiful job by Kinsvatter. 51 yards on that punt from Kinsvatter. Now Hope will come back out here now. Not good field position. Scott's defense needs to take advantage here. Get the flip of the field position. Get a quick stop here. Strickland still has not actually attempted a pass. He's tried a couple of times. Yep, sure thing. Switch to Dan Romano at running back. The bigger bruiser who had the big dumbers last season. With a lot of touchdowns. pounds in the backfield for Hope. Motion from Harris, handoff Romano. No. Nope, kept, sorry, you're right, Strickland has it. And proceeds out to the 15, maybe the 16, where Elma meets him and pulls him down. It's like Hope has a whole different offense designed around Strickland. Right. Well, and I wonder if they do. You know, Strickland had played earlier this year, had completed a pass, yeah. had 55 rushing yards and two touchdowns. So this may be the equivalent of when Elma goes sure. to Rife. Yeah. It seems like there are a lot of different plays at his disposal. Mm -hmm. They take a lot longer to get in from the sidelines than when uh, sure when Wellman was out there and they were going quickly. Which was impressive how quickly they could go with Wellman, who is a backup. Yeah. Remember, this is the third string quarterback, kept again by Strickland off of fake. Elma quickly finds him at the 18, third down and about six. This is the opportunity right here for Elma to flip that field position. Defense has got to stand tall. Sooner or later, Hope will have to do something other than Strickland because, as you said, Elmo will. Well, he tried to key throw on. on the last third yeah. down and he was sacked. The thing Elma is, is when, certainly keying on him, yeah. though. And the thing is, when Hope does do something different, Elma is going to be vulnerable to a big play. Well, that's what you saw from Smith's last possession when he had the 18 yard run. Third down and five. Wellman rolls to his right. Winning out blocks downfield, and a nice block springs him for the first down, taken out by Nelson, but not until he gets to the 27 and moves the chain. Soffredini was the only player with a chance at him, and Hope had him locked up nicely. Now Strickland is certainly a look-to-run first quarterback. He bails out of that pass in a hurry. Don't know much about Mason High School football, but that's where Strickland is from. And I wonder if, I mean, you put him in a high school team, that'd be a load. Yeah. Officials timeout for the Chains. Chain Gang has had a rough go of it over there today. Strickland is a sophomore. It's all, it's broken and tangled again, I think. Yeah, this right, we'll be, we're gonna be offering eight yard yeah, first downs exactly. on discount here soon. 6.46 to go in the third, Elma. 21 to 17, Nelson trying to fire up his defensive teammates. Hope will do some shifting 
as McKenzie goes to the right. Harris from Whitehall goes to the left. Low snap, handoff, Romano trying to get outside and Hum takes out his legs again. Drew's going low and it's working. Drew Hum, we mentioned it, 10 tackles against Hope last year. Having a big senior season already. The MIAA Defensive Player of the Week earlier in the season against Anderson. Drew's brother Anthony playing in a big one in That's Division right. Two right now up at Top Taggart Field. Number one versus two, Ferris and Grand Valley. Not often you'll see the one versus two being no. a conference game, but. No, exactly. Second down and 11, option to the right. Late pitch from Strickland, and he guessed wrong there. And Connor Duma plants Elijah Smith oh, back Duma at the Duma has 17. put some hits on today that have been damaging. Duma, remember, is a former Dutchman himself. And oh, Elijah Smith is probably thinking, why, <laughs> why did, did you, you pitch, pitch that to me? <laughs> third and long, third and 17, another chance for the Scots here. Well, and here's where you find out how aggressive does Peter Sturzma and, off, or, and offensive coordinator Andrew Hawken want to get. Are they gonna try to air it out here with Strickland, who you has not to. thrown a pass? Third and 17, straight drop, pressure from Robertson. Steps up in the pocket, throws oh. short and incomplete. Could not get it to McKenzie okay. and Elmo with a big stop. If Strickland can't run, Hope has a problem, based on what we saw right there. Under a little bit of heat, but doesn't appear to have the same passing range. Maybe not the accuracy. That, that Wellman and, of course, Brown would have had. That brings on Nofziger and the Hope punting unit. Scots need a score. Kowalski back at his 40 to return. Averaging only three yards of return. Scots really have not had any heroics in the return game this season like last year. This one angled away. Kowalski going to try to pick it up on the run. Bobbles it, muffs it again, and just falls on it at the 30. That was one where Kowalski could risk it because he knew he had, had a, a little of bit room. of time. Yep. Yeah, trying to prevent that ball from rolling another 10 yards yep. upfield. Exactly. Fine job. 5.07 to play in the third, 21-17 Elma. To the extent that Elma feels any comfort, it is because of the success of their defense. But still, the key is the answer that started that third quarter with the minute and 14 second touchdown drive hitting the 60 yarder to Lauterman. Trips to the right, handoff Williams, heads back to the right, looked like he was gonna sweep that around the weak side and instead goes right back into the fray but comes out four yards ahead. You just got to keep that up with, with Eddie Williams. And as you said, it's Eddie Williams 2.0 power back. It is, and that he's got that. Today. A lot of his long runs have come off a broken tackle and then gone. Second and six, St. John keeps this one. Quick throw to Thomas, and he's going to get the first down, and as he's spun out of bounds at about the 44. Big first down for the Scots, Thomas will be helped up. I'm sure that right arm's not feeling well, but he'll continue going. Yeah, I think I said left arm earlier, but it is the right arm that is clearly bothering Cole Thomas. Scott's used the other arm to pull him up from the 43. Play action again. St. John quick trigger on a pump fake over the middle. Gorowski reaches back, makes the catch in Hope territory at the 36 and brought down at the 35. It took Carter about two seconds longer to find Gorowski than I wanted, but uh, got him eventually. It's not taking two seconds is for Elma to get to the line, ready to go first down in Hope territory. From the 36, high snap, kind of handcuffs a play fake, deep drop from St. John's sidearm, sling over the middle, caught by Williams in space, breaks the tackle, and it's an Eddie Williams touchdown. The look back from St. John to find the wheel route on the Hope sideline, and Williams makes it 27-17. 36-yard touchdown toss, St. John's to Williams. Carter St. John, what a throw there. I thought he was going to go right to Goralski again. He just looked back left and threw a beauty to Williams. What an answer in this third quarter after everything went wrong for Elma late in the second. They come back with two touchdowns and a chance for Hernandez to reestablish the 11 point lead. A big extra point here. Winds died a little bit for a second. Yep. Van turns down the volume to let Hernandez concentrate and turns it right back up as that one's straight through. 28-17, 4.05 to play in the third. Don't go anywhere.
What a response from Carter St. John in the second half. His dad was a point guard for Kalamazoo College, and Carter St. John has been the point guard of the Elma offense in this second half, leading them back from that three-point deficit to the 11-point lead they had earlier in the game. Kinsvatter boots this one away much better than the earlier attempt. That one's on the S and Scott's in the end zone. That last throw from St. John back to Williams, he led Eddie just enough so that Williams could catch that in stride. Williams had a defender right with him. And as soon long. as Williams caught it, he was gone. Not for long. That was just a seed from St. John. So what do you do now for Hope? It's hard. It's difficult right, right here. Down to their third string quarterback, Chance Strickland, who has been effective on the ground but attempted only one pass, which fell incomplete. Brown is over there. It looks like he wants to go, and maybe the coaches are not letting him go. Which, as a coach, sometimes you just have sometimes to do. you got to do it. Play action fake. Thrown into space and incomplete. Pushed in the general direction of Harris, but out of reach. And I think you're right that, that Strickland is a running quarterback that Definitely. is being forced into an uncomfortable position, now down by two scores. And, and that's what is so huge about the throws that St. John has made here early in this third quarter is it puts Hope into this mm -hmm. uncomfortable situation. They started the third up by three. That's where you love to have a running oh, yeah. quarterback that can grind that clock down. Elma has flipped that in a hurry. Second and 10, Strickland back to the ground. Slides to his right, hurdles over one tackler and pushes the pile, Elma pile forward. That's an eight yard he pickup. Is just awful good as a running quarterback though. It's effectively a Wildcat offense when he's running. Oh, which, it is, yeah. Which, if you remember, the whole development of the Wildcat is a numbers game, that yeah. it gives you one more blocker by forcing teams to account for the quarterback as a rusher. First down yardage on the third down play. Running to the right, Strickland gets to the 40. Yeah, he has been very effective as a runner. That's a, his 21st carry already. Going to put him up over 80 yards, 83 of them. Elma subs in with Underhill and Patrick Height. Height, one of many Elma players that we saw out for Victory Day last Sunday, a wonderful community event. Hope from the 40 on first down, down 28 to 17. Handoff up the middle. Smith right into Underhill's arms. Flowers in there as well. Not much room for Elijah Smith Good to stop. pick up only of two. Scott's continuing to sub fairly aggressively and have much more ability with Strickland in the game to do the subbing little because more time, uh, the, yeah. the plays are taking longer to signal in. Yeah, especially in a situation like this where the ball's on the yeah. far hash mark that Elma can still get the personnel across the field and ready to go. Second and eight, Harris in motion. Strickland fakes it to him, runs right. Sanderson gets the ankles. He falls forward only for a yard. That was a good athletic play by Hunter Sanderson. Brings up a third down. Scotts will sub, get a couple of DBs in there. Bring the lineman off. Jackson, one of the two that come off. Sanderson out of Perry. Had seven tackles coming into the game. Blocked a kick against Manchester. Third down and seven for Hope. Elma already up by 11. Trying to make the situation even more dire for the Dutchman. Strickland, quick throw to the right. Slings it in. Has his first completion. Nofziger's got the first down into Elma territory. That was a nice throw there. Quick fire. Nice tackle out there by Duma with Soffredini helping. Much better. Much better from Strickland there. At a very important time. If huge. Hope has to give it up there. Yep. No, that's a huge first down. Becomes hard to envision a way back into yeah. the game. Now, no, Dutchman need to finish this drive now. Yeah. Now a completely different situation. A minute and a half to go in the third quarter. 28-17 Elma. Strickland sends Harris in motion, but keeps it himself, runs right, and there's a number of Scots that apparently were sent to that neighborhood. Yes. Loss of two on the play. That was Rademacher yep. out of PW. Underhill in there again, height as well. Second down and 12. Elma gets Evan Eastman into the game defensively. 
Rademacher stays in. Sofferdini and Jackson, the linebackers. Nelson turned into a fifth defensive back in what is effectively a 4-2-5 alignment this time. Straight up the middle. Strickland, another nice burst. Will not get the first down, though. Sofferdini finds the ankles at the 40. And he's got a full three to go. Yeah. That's where the loss on first down makes a big difference. Hope can do that in the fourth quarter if they want. I don't think that they would want to wait that long. Sofferdini, 12 tackles already, 20 Jeez. seconds and counting. Uh, they are going to do it in the fourth quarter. Looks, it looks that way. No attempt to signal a play in. Couple second differential with the game clock, and they will just yeah. wait. Wow. They'll spin around and head to the north, trailing by 11. The Scots dominate the third quarter, and off we go to the final 15 minutes. 28-17, Elma. Stay with us. Elma 15 minutes away from its first win against Hope since 2015 in a 6-0 start. Hope, though, on the move, looking to answer 28-17. Elma on top after 14 points in the third quarter. Chance Strickland out of Mason, third string quarterback, now leading the Dutchman offense. Third down and three here from the Elma 40. Motion to the right, Strickland keeps it himself off a of fake, trying to get outside, gets away from Jackson, slides inside a tackler, and Alec Frederick makes the stop. What another first down for Hope. Now oh, that inside slide was pretty neat. I'll tell you what, assuming that Hope has one of its two passing quarterbacks available next week, they gotta find a way to incorporate Strickland into yes. the offense, because he has been by far the most affecting, ru effective rushing threat. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Hope has to finish the drive, though, here. First down at the 32, Elma by 11. Strickland play fake, rolls right, pumps, looks long, nobody there. Dancing around, now throws underneath. Nice little check down to McKenzie, caught at the 27. And look at Gage Nelson just hold on to the laundry. I've seen him do that a time or two. That is some hand strength there. It also tells you about how strong the Hope jerseys are. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure Those who are stretchy. I'm not sure who their apparel provider is, but whoever it is ought to find the video of that play and just use it as a demonstration yeah. of how good their stuff is. On the other hand, maybe you want a jersey that would break in that situation. <laughs> Second down and seven, three yards on the pickup, and there we see Kenya Houston in for one of the first times today. He'll be the fake man, kept by Strickland as usual, down to the 25. Yeah, he does not give it up too often. Third down and three again. It's Houston. probably about time for him to give it up, and it should be wide open. Houston, who also runs track for Hope from Chicago. Coach Peter Sturzman has said he thinks Houston will be the mayor someday. All right. Sun shining right now. Gorgeous out all of a sudden. Houston had a leap over the top for the game-winning touchdown against Aurora earlier this year. Third down and three probably won't go over the top here, but Hope does give it to him. Instead, he'll keep his feet, go left down to the 16 and pick up another Hope first down. And Hope suddenly is a rushing team again. Absolutely. Which, we, which we've seen in the past. You know, Mason Oppel, who ran this offense for a number of years and graduated with 87 total touchdowns, he was a load, but Hope was still more of a rushing team through those years. Strickland running left, leans forward. Maybe a yard to the 15. Right, we went to a hurricane and a nice day broke out. All of we're a in the eye right now. Yeah, that's that's about right. We really should not be overconfident here. 
Second and nine after a one yard pickup. Hope's still very patient. They are. And if they get into a situation where they've got to go up tempo late in this game, they'll have to figure out a way to do that. 12-22, but that really increases the priority of getting a touchdown on this possession. Motion to the right. Fake handoff straight up the middle again from Strickland to the 12. Fake that to Kareem Williams that time. Oh, maybe McKenzie actually, sorry. Three, not two. Hope looks at another third down. We talked about Hope's 44% third down conversion yes. rate coming into the day. Six of 16 today, 38%, but that has picked up considerably since the first half. Remember, they opened 0 for 4. Right. Three wide receivers come to the right. Knopfziger is the widest on third down and six. Strickland, a perfunctory play fake, runs right into the arms of height and goes nowhere at the 12. And now Hope's got to make a decision, and they field will goal kick team the field comes goal out quickly. to get within eight. I think on a fourth and, and sixth situation like that, that's probably the right call. You've got to get some points here. I think you also, with Strickland, like your chances of picking up three yards sure. on a two-point conversion yep. if you have to later to try to tie the game. Although he was stonewalled twice from the two earlier that, in the game. That's true. Stage. Although yeah, the sample size might say otherwise. Hilger for the field goal. Drilled. That's your all MIAA kicker right 28 there. 28 to 20 with 10.57 to go. We'll pause, come back. Last part of the fourth quarter coming up. Hope sends the kickoff team out, having closed back to a one-score game at 28 to 20. Dylan Hilger with the field goal to cap that drive off after Elma finally slowed down the Hope third down conversion machine. But a nice drive led by Chase Strickland, doing it almost all himself on the ground. Chance Strickland, I apologize. I've done that multiple times today. Well, Chase Brown is, of course, the Hope uh, regular right. starter. Yep. gives it a boot good contact with this one and Elma with a fair, fair catch. catch in the end zone so you don't get to add 25 yard no, line to 25 no. yard line by doing both unfortunately but Elma will get Carter St. John back out there remember St. John was 8 of 15 for 98 yards in the first half and two interceptions completely different story in that third quarter yeah he's up to 233 yards now and two touchdowns 13 of 22 overall, so that's, let's see, five of seven in the second half. Any points on this drive from the Scots would go a long way towards sealing this game up. Williams, who caught the last touchdown, gets the carry on first down. Slide steps to his right, then back into the middle. First down, three yards, Eddie Williams is becoming very, very common yeah, for the Scots. Second and seven is a <laughs> familiar situation for Elma today. Williams and the receiving touchdown his first receiving touchdown fifth reception of the year French goes slides in a little closer to the line of scrimmage play action pressure St. John has to throw quickly it's complete but for a loss as Cole Thomas gets tackled right in the middle of his back he did that one looked like it probably hurt Kamara the leading tackler for this hope unit under defensive coordinator coordinator Jacob Pardonet a 2018 Hope grad who came in for James Ross, former Michigan player who took that position and then was offered a similar position at the University of Cincinnati. So Hope turning to an alum to run their defense. Third down and eight, rolling right. St. John, very deep Doesn't drop and a anybody. lot of pressure. Now throws back over the middle. That's dangerous. Almost got it to Goralski, punched away by Kamara. Great defense by that Hope secondary right there. Good coverage all around. Almost going to have to punt. Little bit of a risky throw back towards the middle across his body. 
So yeah. now the momentum back in favor of Hope, and, and they're going to have a chance to go down and tie this football game. And I hear the Hope radio crew, Jake Pardonay, pronunciation of their defensive coordinator. Kinsvatter delivers an end-over-end -end punt, and Vanderkoy mm. came up, thought about it, and then just got out of the way at the last second. That was a little dangerous from Adam Vanderkoy himself. Elma downs it at the 37. Yeah, that was a last minute abort, that's for sure. Hope will return their offense to the field, trailing by eight, 9.38 to go. Let's see if they can grind out another possession and turn it into an end zone visit like they did late in the second quarter, scoring with a couple minutes left in the first half to briefly take the lead at 17 to 14. Elma then answered with two third quarter touchdowns. Hilger with a field goal here in the fourth. And that's what brings us to 28 to 20. See if Strickland can engineer another drive here. He stands back at his 32, hands off on first down in a big hole for Houston, all the way to midfield and across to the Elma 49. That's opened up now because of the quarterback runs. And interesting, I, I don't understand why it took so long to see Kenya Houston in the game. Hope's leading rusher on the season coming in. He gets it on second down and is met in the backfield. Introduce yourself to Eli Jackson. Jackson hangs around and hope helps Houston up. But a loss of a yard on the quick hit there. And that's the kind of plays that Elma needs to make on first down to put Hope behind the chains. Hope loses two back onto their own side, 49 yard line. Clock running with 8.55. And again, they're taking a long time. Fourth quarter here, Elma by eight, looking to open the season 6-0 and and get their first win against Hope since 2015. Play fake, run from Strickland and breaks a couple of tackles. Hum has to make the stop again. This is gonna be very close, about a half a yard shy of a first down. Thought Strickland had more room than that, actually, initially. Strickland has just proven very, very difficult to bring down at 226 pounds. Dylan Clem just had to come off off that offensive line. Third down in a yard as Hope is trying to pick up the speed themselves. Run from Strickland to the left. Breaks a couple of tackles. Eastman makes the stop, but it's another first down and another third down conversion. Yachik had a chance in the backfield, but could not get there. And now Hope driving again into Scott's territory. Plenty of time remaining for them in this game. 28 to 20, Hope needs a touchdown and a two point conversion to knock this thing up. From the 37, first down, option play coming right. Now they'll reverse it. They get it into the hands of Harris and he's got a lot of space at the 30. Kretschmar comes over and takes out his ankles. Good job also out of the secondary from one of the Scots who stepped up. Not sure if that was Robertson actually coming back or home stepping up. <laughs> it was Robertson that got uh kind of bamboozled on it for sure. But Hope down to the 21 yard line, looked like speed option to the right. And they had Harris at a slot receiver on the right coming back to the left who took a pitch to completely reverse the direction of the play. First down Hope again. Strickland to throw, under pressure. The Scots get there, he just heaves it at the last second over to the sideline, actually hits the first down marker <laughs> like a bullseye. And they will say he was out of the pocket, no grounding. I don't think it would have been grounding anyway. There were a couple of Dutchman players over there near the end zone at least, so. Makes it second and 10. Dylan Clem came right back into the yeah. game for Hope as well. Houston is the running back behind Strickland. He'll get it on second down, slices, dices, finds space down to the 11. Elma barely able to hold on as Soffredini chalks up another it's be tackle. A first down. It's going to be first down from the 11 yard line. Hope into the red zone looking to tie this thing up. De facto first and goal situation for Hope. Hope 78% in the red zone this year, 69% touchdowns coming into today. Elma 28, Hope 20, 6.51 to go in the fourth quarter, but Hope threatening here, first down from the Elma 11. Strickland running left off a of fake, hit for a loss. Dunwoody, the first of multiple Scots there. Flowers had stepped up, Soffredini as well. 
Hope remains committed to the fakes to force Elma just to pay attention before knowing for sure that Strickland's gonna have it. Right, yeah, you're absolutely right there. They've done a great job. I, I feel they've run the offense really, really well with Strickland. Yeah, I mean, we don't know exactly how much they have run this system this year. We know it has appeared from time to time, but in terms of having to just make a wholesale change in the second quarter, they have adapted exceptionally well. Big props to Andrew Hawken and the offensive staff from the Dutchman, second down and 11. Strickland drops, looking to throw. A little flare pass caught by McKenzie at the 12. Well blocked, cuts to the inside, inside the two, and leans across wow. for a touchdown. TJ McKenzie, his first touchdown since week three and fourth of the year, and hope a two-point conversion away from tying this game. It's an 11-yard touchdown pass, and what a response from Hope here. TJ McKenzie, a great story out of North Muskegon, raised by his grandmother's husband, 14 pops, Gooden, great high school athlete over at North Muskegon, averaged over 20 points per game in the basketball season, plays some hoops for Hope as well. But now with a crucial touchdown to get his team within two, 28-26, Hope now the team that has rallied from 11 down for the second time today, going for two. Strickland rolling to his right. Under a little bit of pressure. Throws in the back of the end zone. Too high and incomplete. Roberson made that play. Jerome Roberson. Great came with pursuit the flag on the play. Way out away okay, from the play. You're right. The flag is Hold on the everything. back side. So let's just see here. All right. Find the heck out legal of that. Yeah, legal receiver downfield that normally designates an alignment issue yeah. on the far sideline. Oh, Jerome Robertson was really after Strickland that time. Wasn't going to let him run. Forced the throw, and it was high, wide, and handsome. Scott's hold on to the lead. 540 to play. Offense is going to have to step up big again. Lots of time left here. No reason for hope. Oh, and remember, hope can kick from 55, we know. Right, yes, and now within... The score where a field goal wins it. Don't think you would see any razzle-dazzle from Hope here on the kickoff because it's just enough to expect it where yeah. Elma will be paying attention, but not enough time to need it. You're absolutely right. Uh, Elma is looking for the hands team. They've got about 100 guys <laughs> yelling hands over there. I think everybody's gotten the message. Certainly have enough folks available if they need them. Nelson Jackson will be up there. Cole Thomas. Elma very much going to crowd this. This is this may be overly aggressive from Elma because all they have is Buddy Hogan. Yeah, back they're going to have to break line. off into a, a return if Hope comes out a little more standard. Now, there are a lot of places that Hilger could place this and make Elma give chase from a long ways well, away. And he's kicking it because there's a holder. You can't onside kick with a holder. Suppose, Scott's are in I trouble here. I think. Suppose he could try. Where is Hilger going to go with this? Kretschmar, suspicious. He's going to drop backwards. And it's a high hanging Kicking it kick. into the end zone is not what you wanted to do there. And just into the end zone across the goal line. Oh, Elma got gets a flag the here yep. on the kickoff. I Up. think Safardini is going to be flagged again. Now, pleading his case. Can't believe it. So Elma's going to get backed up to about their 12 and a half. But you're right, if if I'm Hilger in that situation, and I don't know how easy it is to control this, but if he could have pulled about five yards worth of power off of that and dropped it at the oh, five. Wave the flag off, Safardini wins his argument. Okay, well, well done. Safardini pleads his case. Now has to explain <laughs> his case to the coaching staff as well, having already won the battle. Maybe he doesn't know that the flag got waved off. All right, so here we go. It's gonna be Hogan in the backfield. Alma has done that, and from what we understand, they're trying to minimize the workload on Williams a little bit just because he is well, midway through a season of a lot of carries. carries already today. And often Hogan gets the corner on the left across the 30 and out of bounds, a big five yard pickup. That's absolutely fine for the Scots as far as a start goes to the drive. Clock continues to run, 5.27 to go in the game. Elma by two, 28-26. Scott, slow things up here. I 
wonder how well this offense functions in a slow Right, pace. yeah, do, do they know how to do it? Scots have gone hurry up so effectively all season. St. John calls for it, gives it to Hogan, gonna run up the middle, bounces off a journey, and stays on his feet outside to the left, back inside at the 40, and then pulled out of bounds and tackled out much. of bounds. The Scots want a flag, not gonna get it. Oh my that goodness. Was definitely close. And as the hit came a little Whistle, late from Whistles debris. had come, which, were, which was what should have led to the flag, I thought. But far more importantly, Buddy Hogan gets the first down for Elma. That is such a and huge. And Hope's going to start. Well. Now I think this is official whistles. timeout. They've got the ball. They've got the ball spotted a yard off again. Caught the wrong yard line again. Second time that's happened. Yep. Still a first down. From the 42. St. John bleeding the play clock down somewhat, down to 15 seconds. Everybody just kind of standing there. It requires the offensive line to hold their stances. Now they snap it. Hogan again running out, runs out oh of room boy. in the backfield and brought down by Brady Howe, the captain out of Holland Christian. That's a big loss. Yep, it was a little too much dancing that time. And Williams will come back in. Nonetheless, what a find in Buddy Hogan, who, remember, yes. started the season wearing a different number because he played on the other side of the football. He was a that defensive he back to start the year. Week two against Manchester, coaching staff pulled me aside and said, hey, by the way, we're going to move Hogan to running back tonight. That Hope, has proven Hope uses their first time out here. It's going to be second down and 14. Still 419 to go in the game. So I think well. it's smart for Hope to use it right here. Loss of four on first down. Sure. Well, I mean, as, as we've often talked about, a timeout used defensively saves the most time, especially it if does. the offense is running the play clock down, as Elma has been on this possession. See Justin Peck out on the field doing some technical sound repairs to the official's mic pack. That man does everything around he here. He does, no doubt. I think the Scots are ready to play yeah. here, though. Gonna make a run to Radio Shack. 422 left in this one. Elma by 228, 26. They led 14 to 3, trailed 17 to 14, led 28 to 17, and now hope back within two. Second down and 13, almost 14 after the loss. St. John pulls down a high snap, a perfunctory pump fake, looking long and a little bit of a hold on Frenchko, no flag, he can't believe it. Certainly looked to me like a jersey tug there, prevented Frenchko getting a full break and the fall, ball falls incomplete at the 30. Oh boy, oh boy, that's tough. Excellent play call, but Elma unable to get it to Frenchko, who has largely been held in check in the receiving game today, two catches for 33 yards. Now third and 14 with still 4.18 to go. St. John, another play fake, rolling to his right, waiting for somebody to open up, throws off Frenchko's fingertips, would have been well short of the first down anyway at about the 46. But Elma's gonna have to punt it away and come up with a defensive stand with 4.11 left in this one. Elma has owned the odd quarters and Hope has owned the evens. That they have. <clears throat> Need a good punt here from Kinsvatter. Wind has kicked back up pretty much straight across the field at the moment from Kinsvatter's right to left. Good snap, plenty of time, end over end kick, kept away from Vanderkoy, lands just inbounds at the 26 and bounces directly out of bounds. So Hope's gonna have to go 75 yards. Well, not necessarily. Not though, even close. They, they don't have to get that far. With Hilger, remember the threat. A 50-yard field goal against Adrian two weeks ago, setting a new hope record for Dylan Hilger out of Lake Fenton. We saw him connect from 55 in warm-up. Going this direction. It would be extremely challenging in this wind to actually get it through the uprights from that far. But I would think that hope, if hope can find its way to the Elma 30, that's close enough to at least try. I think they try it from the 35 even. 4.05 to go. Hope with two timeouts. Elmo with all three should they need them. Chance Strickland from Mason. Third string quarterback who has tried to rescue the Dutchman today. Hands off on first down. 
Not much room there. Somebody down at the bottom of that pile made a heck of a play. Kenya Houston gets two. It was Jackson. We shall see how much Hope can accelerate their tempo. They ran very deliberately early in the quarter. Two trains of receivers to both sides. Strickland quickly looks to throw, then pulls it down, runs up the middle, nothing there. Height, Jackson, and others make the stop, and Hope quickly faces third down and six, watching the clock run down under three and a half minutes, and they've only made it five or four yards. Hoogland comes in as a tight end. He'll be on the left side of the formation, two receivers that direction, third down and five. Strickland looks left, now rolls, looking to throw. Not much there, now tucks it away, cuts inside and hit two yards short, short of the first down. He's only a yard short after the push and a good spot. Oh, it's getting worse. So fourth and inches. 250 to play. Knopfziger needs the crosses 40. the field and checks out. So no punt coming here from No, home. no, no. See if Helma sells out here. They got to get ready. Hope packs the formation in very, very tight, and they'll just run Strickland into the pile, push Easy. it forward, and pick up the first down by Scots three Scots were never really ready defensively there. Hard to get ready for that play out of a brand new formation without using a timeout. At the same time, officials have already wound the clock. Yeah, despite this is the first moving, down. and Hope is using some time. 2.17 to play. Remember, Hope only needs a field goal. Now from their own 37. 28-26, Elma. High drama here at Balky Field. The reverse deep pitch to McKenzie back Hold. at his 30. Cuts inside, tripped up at the 40. The officials are not doing Elma any favors here. Nelson was held big time. Brought down at the 45 after an eight yard gain. 150 clock rolling. Second and two, Strickland puts his heels on the 40 yard line to take this snap. Shoulder fake right, now looking deep. Now throws underneath and off the fingertips and incomplete Short to Hoogland. Short a little bit there by Hoogland. And that's important because it creates a third down situation. It only cost Hope about four yards. <coughs> only third and two. But Hope has to pay attention to the down and distance still with only a minute and 39 left in a two point ball game. Elma five and oh, Hope three and three. Hope down by two, trying to pick up third and two. Up the middle, Strickland short by a yard at the 46. Clock's running. Some See if point. the Scots can get set this time. At some point, Hope might have to think about a timeout here unless they know what they want to run. They will instead try to set quickly. Not set. Fourth down and one. Elma four down lineman. Strickland will, of course, run with it. Has the first Ooh, down, not, by, not by a lot, but he's got it to the 48. <laughs> Briefly stops the clock with a minute and 13. Hope has not made it to midfield yet. They're one big play away, though, from being in field goal range. Clock restarted now, first down. Strickland to throw. Deep drop to the 40, under pressure. Wobbler over the middle and incomplete. Got his arm hit as he Robertson threw. Robertson again. Second and 10, clock stops with a minute and three. Scotts will use the incompletion and stopped clock to get some subs in, knowing that Hope won't hustle as much when the clock isn't running against them. This heralded Elma defense trying to rise to the occasion one more time. Second down and 10. Strickland again drops to his 40. High over the middle into traffic. Tipped and incomplete. Drew Hum had his hands on it. McKenzie, the intended receiver. Dangerous right there. Hum came underneath. Got a hand on it though, third and 10. Elma had Soferdini back there along with Kretschmar as a little bit of deep help and that gave Hum the luxury to make a play on the football. Five seconds ran off the clock on that play, 58 seconds left in the game. 28-26 Elma, Hope third down and 10. Strickland to throw again. Running out of receivers and running out of time. Sacked back at the 40, a huge hit for Elma. It's Matt Oswald with his third sack of the year. Hope's going to have to use a timeout here. Oswald came through huge. Strickland's shaken up a little bit. He's up and off now. And Hope's going to have to draw up their best fourth and 17. Oswald from Beale City has been a pass rusher in 
situational defense. They bring him in there, and he gets home when it mattered most. I don't know if Strickland ever saw him. At the same time, big salute to the Scots secondary. Yes. Because Strickland had a little bit of time and just had no place to go with the football. It'll be fourth and 17. Dutchman have picked up a number of plays like this so far with Harris. Hope coming in today, 50% on the season on fourth down. With 50 seconds and only one timeout left, a stop is enough for the Scots. They would be able to kneel it down. You gotta be careful here, you can't rough the passer. Hope three of six on fourth down today. Chance Strickland, a sophomore out of Mason, forced into duty by two quarterback injuries, has performed admirably for the Dutch. Can he find one more heroic moment? Drops and throws, caught by Rampersad, tackled before he can get a pitch away. They wanted a little hook and ladder. Sorry, it's not Rampersad, it's Grant Holzer out of Okemos, and the Scots hold hope short. Kretschmar. And will be able to pick up their first win they're gonna with call just a the, couple of kneel downs. They're gonna call the pass incomplete, I think. Well, based on the spot, I think you may be right. Kretschmar was there instantly. It was a hook and ladder. It was gonna go to Harris. Yeah, Holzer wanted to get rid of that, and I think that's right as to why he never possessed it long enough. Kretschmar was there. Elma was 6-0 in its sights. They need 44 seconds. It'll require a kneel down. If they can get four seconds off the clock, they won't even have to snap it again. St. John stands and kneels with 42. How quickly do they get the play? Well, they set the play clock at 20 for some reason. Now they reset it to 40 and start it, and they will not have to snap the ball again unless Hope just wants to call timeout to make them kneel. We'll see. Does not look like it. Hope would certainly be well within its right to do so in a two-point game, but looks like the white flag has been waved. Jason Couch trying to keep his team off the field so they're not called for too many men, but this team can't help it. They're gonna celebrate. They've beaten the Dutchman and moved to 6-0 in a heroic <laughs> battle that really shows the heart of this team. Oh gosh, both of them. I mean, Strickland was phenomenal for Hope, but uh, the Scots did not back down. They didn't ever blink. And Carter St. John with those two third quarter touchdown passes, critical. 